world shooting music news for MTV in the early 80s. I headed production and promotion departments at channels 29, 25, 34, and 42 in West Palm. I worked news promotion at channel 6 and channel 9 in Orlando. I produced for the Cable Health Network, which is now WebMD at Universal Studios. And I was creative director of Ed McMahon's Next Big Star, the first website to spin off a TV series, and it was the predecessor for American Idol. My last TV gig was the weekly broadcast for First Baptist Church of Orlando. Now, when I was there, they had 10,000 members. The average Sunday attendance for two services was 7,000. They have 100 pastors on staff. Their weekly offering, nearly a half million dollars. They have a weekly broadcast that's aired on Channel 9 since the 1950s. And back then, the show had a Nielsen rating of one. Uh, that's a terrible rating for a television show. It would have been canceled. It's 1% of the population watching. That's what that means. Now, if they hadn't been paying for the airtime, they would have been done. Now, the population for that television station is Orange, Seminole, Osceola, Lake, Volusia, Brevard, Sumter, Marion, and Flagler counties, which is 30 million people. Now, if you do the math, that means that that television show is being watched in 300,000 households every week. And those people mailed in donations, they bought audio recordings and videos. They found Christ on television. But the Episcopal Church has never embraced TV ministries. Many of us find televangelism kind of tasteful. Um, and so we have what, lots of smaller neighborhood churches rather than a few mega churches. Because we prefer the intimacy, the relationships, the sacraments, the sacredness. And a lot of that gets lost in giant churches. And then Last March, everything changed because we couldn't do anything the way we used to. We couldn't hug, we couldn't shake hands. And how are we to keep our congregations together without coffee hour or Bible studies or quilting? How can we continue to reach out to the lost when we can't even let them in our doors? Well, fortunately, social media has opened the door for us and for others as well. You may not realize this, but 500 million viewers Watch 100 million hours of video content on Facebook daily. YouTube has 2 billion subscribers who watch a billion hours of video every single day. Now, the corporate name of our church is the Domestic and Foreign Missionary Society. This is a gateway for us to do mission work around the globe without leaving our homes, without leaving our churches. St. Gabriel started streaming services on Facebook Live a couple of years ago. I thought it'd be a good idea. And I'll give you an example. When our former junior warden died, we live streamed this family, eight siblings, and grandchildren. And they were spread all across the country, and some were in poor So the day of the funeral, there were 150 people jammed into our little Carpenter Gothic church, but there were 150 more computers watching the live stream on Facebook. Okay. And also, like some of the snowbirds, many of them prefer St. Gabriel's over their home church because they can stay connected to us year round, and so they do. There is somebody who's got a mic open. If you could please mute your phone, because I'm bustling in the uh, little distracting folks. Thank you. Um, keep going. So when COVID-19 came and locked us down, our live stream uh, was church. That was it, whatever we could do. Um, but what we realized was the camera was carefully concealed in our 19th century Carpenter Gothic church. We didn't want to make an ugly scene, so we kind of tried to make it as invisible as possible. However, when I looked at the video, once this COVID started, I took a critical eye to it. It wasn't just a matter of the priest getting something up there. It was a matter of my old self waking up the, the production side of me. And, and I realized that our videos looked like a security camera and not like actual television. It wasn't intimate. It didn't feel close. Uh, the people were very small on the screen. Uh, the audio was echoey. It, it, you know, I realized what we had to do was get the camera off the ceiling. You know, if you watch movies, you'll notice that they have these big wide shots. I call them an establishing shot at the beginning of the picture or the beginning of the scene. And they're only a couple of seconds long. But the rest of the scene is all waist shots and close-ups. So unless you move in, you can't read the people's faces. And that's really important. Interpersonal communication is 7% words, 
40% tone of voice, and 53% body language. And if the sound isn't great, the tone of voice is lost. And if they can't see your facial expressions, the body language is lost, and communication becomes strained, or worse, completely broken. You have a rare opportunity to establish intimacy with the viewer, the parishioners, the seekers who tune in to see what we're doing, and moving in closer to the readers and the celebrant and the singers and the preacher helps connect them with the people who are watching. Now, with no people in our churches, we have a rare opportunity to put the camera wherever we want. You can set up shots with interesting backgrounds. If there's a stain on the wall behind the reader, you can just move the lectern or move the reader completely. I don't want you to be afraid to show your church's best features and, and because that's not what people normally see. Uh, we're not just doing a blueprint of what happened there because these are not normal times. Make your shots pretty. Are the flowers in the right spot for the camera or for that absent congregation? Pay attention to the little details. I'm going to show you an example here. I'm going to share a screen with you to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Here you go. Okay, so here you see a couple of pictures. This is what our sanctuary looked like on Easter Sunday from the back of the church. A lot of empty pews, a lot of empty spaces. But if you look closely up here, you see there's some green stuff. This shot back here looks like Easter. It's full, it's flowered, it's, it's big and beautiful, it looks wonderful. The camera, that one single camera is the eye of every single parishioner. And so when you shoot with your cameras for these services, it's really important that you make it look full and packed because that shows that we're still with them. If you have to compare these two pictures, which service would you want to attend? Would you want to attend the one that everybody's there and you're, that looks like they're full and that it's alive? Or are you, are you going to go with the one that looks like the great big empty room? That's a key part uh, of what we're doing. Um, let me go back here to this here. All right. Um, so I'm going to take a break at this point, and I'm going to give you a chance to kind of um, uh, field some, uh, take some of your questions uh, and... Uh, and see what that is there. So, there we go. Okay. So, does uh, anybody have any questions or any thoughts about this different way of shooting your videos and getting up close? Um, and I'm talking about if you're in a single camera situation, that you're not afraid to put the church 10 feet in front of the celebrants, uh, that you're six feet in front of the reader. If you're using a single camera, uh, it's really key to do that because the only microphone you have is the mic that's on the camera. And those cameras are designed not to pick up sound more than six feet away. So if you put the camera in the back of the church, you're going to have terrible sound and you're not going to see anything. Um, any thoughts about that? Any comments or anything like that? I have a comment. Uh-huh. So Father Rob, one challenge that we had early on was not having multiple cameras, or if we were able to come up with multiple cameras, not having multiple camera operators, right. and then the, the added confusion of what's the audio source and so forth. What we started falling back on, and if somebody's shooting with a single camera, maybe they don't have this ability, but maybe they should look into it. And that is we would record a bunch of B-roll or background footage prior to the service, close-ups of flowers, close-ups of candles, so on and so forth. So if I needed something to go to, to add interest to the shoot, I would go from that one well-placed camera with the audio and go to pre-recorded video that we may have just shot that afternoon or whatever, and just throw that in with some kind of a switcher. And that seemed to work out well with us. Now, we didn't come to that conclusion till we had already been recording for a few months. And then it, it just occurred to us, well, this still works. It's still the church. It's still elements of the church. And it's really served as well. Yeah, multiple cameras is a good way to do it. Uh, and and you, have, you have a couple of choices. One way is, the, 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 that's the simplest basic starting point, is the simple one uh, single camera. Um, multiple cameras are better. Uh, but then there's the also, also the option of shooting ahead and editing and posting your, posting your, your services. Um, we're shooting uh, with four cameras, posting and repositioning and shooting a film style with four individual setups in the sanctuary uh, to do it. It's a lot of work. 
I would not recommend jumping into that unless you've got some experience or you have people who have experience to do that. Um, uh, and it is time consuming, but the results are phenomenal. I mean, uh, I, I've got people who are tuning in from all over the country now to watch your stuff simply because the production values are so high. You have to realize that whoever you're, uh, whoever's going to tune into your stuff is watching ABC, NBC, HBO. That's the standard of television that they're used to. And if it looks like they're watching security cameras, they're not going to come back and you're going to lose people. We already know that after COVID, the people who stopped coming to church, more than 30% of them have not done anything to do church at all. They're not watching live. They're not engaging in church. They basically are just isolating themselves from God and everybody else. And that's really terrible. So if we can do some things to kind of draw them in, I think that can be really, really helpful. I'm going to show you um, uh, any, oh, let me get any other questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. Father Rob, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. So um, since you had helped us out when we started live streaming, right. using the same camera, how did you address your audio issues with it? We're looking into it. We just got a new sound system in the church. So it sounds great in the church. Yep. That doesn't help what's going out, you know, what's being broadcast. Okay. The, so we are looking into getting an actual feed into the camera. That's the best. That's the only way you can really do a good job and, and to do it. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. The house sound system will have some kind of a monitor output or an auxiliary output. And you connect to that auxiliary output and just run a cable. Now, since nobody's in the church, who cares if a wire runs across the floor? Just go with it. You know, it's a, uh, if you think of your shoots now more as a, that the church is a set where you're shooting rather than a sanctuary that you're covering, it gives you some freedom to move things around and not be afraid if a wire runs across the pew, it's not the end of the world because no one's going to see that except the people that are trying to put an image together for everyone. Right. So that, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Virtually every camera, if you can, even cell phones now have ways that you can uh, sneak uh, external audio sources into them. Uh, and the best way to do that is to come off the board and, and get a clean feed. Um, but you know, if you've got an organ like in our place, um, you've got to have some way to pick it up as well, too. So there's ambient microphones in it as well. Now, I have learned uh, sound-wise um, that I actually have a board feed that goes into a principal, the principal camera, but I also record audio off of all the... I use cell phones for all my cameras. Uh, I have two iPhone a 10, an 11, and an iPad, and that's what we use, and plus the Mevo. And the mics are open on those, and when they record that, that audio... I add that in there and it adds room tone to it. So it kind of fattens it up. Um, so if you listen to our quartets, it sounds like eight people or 10 people. They sound really full and lush. Um, so even if you have a small choir, it can actually fatten up the sound if you add in the mic from the phones, those, those audio feeds from the phones. That can help you out a lot too. But yeah, the, the best way to do it is to get a sound feed. Now, if you, uh, if you don't have a, that capability, we've... Uh, I have a wireless microphone that I use during the services with a little, um, little, you know, little wire thing that sticks out the side. Uh, and I plug that straight into the camera. And I actually plug it straight into a mixer with a couple of mics plugged into it, a little four input mixer. You can buy a little four input mixers um, for about 80 bucks and just plug what you need into that and then take the output of that and then that and run that straight into your principal camera. And you can get really good results and, and it sounds pretty good. Um, if you listen to, uh, I'll show you our Vimeo channel. If you want to listen to any of the stuff there, or you like any of the stuff that you see, you can, you know, contact me. And uh, uh, and that's that's really kind of true. Uh, let's see. Um, I yeah, I can see some of your questions. I am pre-recording and editing. Um, uh, we don't have the volunteers and audio is a challenge. We have older members that are not able to attend. How do we serve that population? Um, uh, older members. Um, that's always going to be a challenge, um, how we get to them. Uh, one of the things that we have found, though, is that we'll do a phone cast for the service. So you can actually dial a phone number in and listen to the service. Uh, so if they have no technology but a phone, they can do that. We do a daily phone cast of morning prayer with a phone number on our website. They can dial a number in and call in, and they can, they can hear it all. And they can see it. Um, so that can be uh, helpful. Um, um, limited, limited technology. Okay, let me go back here. I'm going to show you a couple things uh, uh, as I move along. 
because I've got more stuff to show you, and I think you're going to like it. That's my hope you're going to like it. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to scroll up here. Okay, so this is the smartphone streaming live to Facebook. Don't hold it in your hand. I recommend you use a DJI Osmo Mobile 3 to stabilize and control your camera. You can move the camera anywhere you want smoothly. It costs 119 bucks. And there's a link on this page which you will have that tells you how to get it. I also recommend that you get a monopod to support the rig while you're parked because you're going to be standing there in front of the reader while they read five or six you know, passages or three, two or three passages and your arm's going to get tired and it's going to get shaky. So if you just hold it on a monopod, you're there. And then when they get ready, you just kind of walk around. It also gives you a chance to get up closer to it. Uh, you don't need to worry about getting anybody's view because your camera is in the eye. Your camera represents the eyes of thousand people. And I always think that I'm more important than someone else. I can remember when we would do these rock concerts and I would have the camera right on the front of the stage and the guy would say, you're in my way. I says, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a thousand people, get over it. Because um, that's kind of what you're doing. You're the, you're the one that has the view. Total investment for this package is less than 200 bucks. Uh, and so if you're looking for an easy, low tech, no tech way to do it, as long as you have a, a cell phone, this is a pretty good way to do it. You can take your phone, set it up to stream live to Facebook and walk around and follow them and you'll be in much better shape than you are today. Just don't be afraid to get up close, okay? I'm gonna go to option two. Option two is the stationary streaming camera. Uh, the one that we're using is a Mevo. This is Mevo's new version. Uh, it's, uh, it's called, um, it's a 10, it's actually a 4K camera for those of you, that's the ultra high definition, that's the high resolution stuff that you see uh, in all the, the TV shops and things like that at Best Buy. Um, but what you do with it is you shoot close-ups. You see the picture, there's like nine images in there. All this, that's taken from a wide shot that has everybody in, but you tap on, you, you can go to any of those close-ups. Uh, the entire, um, the entire uh, screen uh, is, a, is a phone or an iPad. So you put the camera wherever you want, you connect it up with Wi-Fi, uh, and then you just tap on the screen. So it gives you a multi-camera look without multiple cameras. So if you've got a single camera and you wanna change things up and switch it around quickly, it works really well. It also has all the hardware built into the application that lets you stream to YouTube, uh, stream to Facebook, and the Vimeo, and they have a special deal with Vimeo, um, and Vimeo is a, it gives you a producer account for 15 bucks a month. Now that means that you do not get ads like uh, you will on YouTube. Last Sunday I was watching the Sunday Eucharist at the National Cathedral, and they had an insurance com uh, commercial come up but in between the readings in the middle of the service. Um, and the last time we streamed our service on YouTube, our service was followed by a young couple in bed discussing a one night stand. So you don't have any control over what's gonna happen. If you spend the 15 bucks a month and you're on Vimeo instead of YouTube, and then you promote it on your website, you have a clean feed. And when it's over, what pops up is a screen of all of your videos. Um, so that's kind of, those are, the, those are the single camera options that I have. I'm gonna stop here for a second uh, and see if you've got any questions about any of that stuff that I just showed you. We do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, there's one question from Susie Burlock that the east sun is coming through the stained glass windows and the light is really bright when they are recording. Is there anything that they can do? Yes, shoot in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. If you're recording your service, it doesn't really matter. And if you shoot in the afternoon, you'll be able to, there's a, there's a time of day when you'll be able to read the stained glass windows. But if, you, if you're coming in early, in the, if you're coming in the morning and you've got east facing windows like we do, you know, you, you're just going to blow them out. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, well, you our, can need light for it, but boy, you, it's very expensive to bring enough light into a counteract the sun. Mm -hmm. so our issue right now is that we are actually recording live services. Ah. Uh, we're, we're having a nine o'clock service, probably not for much longer. Yeah. Um, at this point, and the bishop is coming this Sunday. Okay. We're trying to record that service as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're kind of stuck. The only, thing, the only, if you have to shoot that way, then I would suggest that you try and move your camera off to a 45 degree angle from the altar and shoot from the side so that the windows are off on the side so that you do get some definition. 
Also, when you set up your camera, make sure that you set your exposure for the purpose, uh, for the, the speaker's faces, and don't worry about the windows. They're just gonna blow out and go just solid white. Um, I shot some stuff last week uh, for our Sunday service this week, um, and I had the same thing happen. I mean, they, fortunately, the, the music that the choir is singing at that point is kind of angelic, and it has a nice theme to it, you know. Um, Hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord, and it's glowing, and it's, so you, if you can use it, go with it, but yeah, that's really the only thing you can do is try and get them out of the shot. Um, currently, we're having um, live services also. How close is appropriate to get um, to the, to the, oh, when they're doing communion? Um, you know, Everybody has different opinions. My opinion is that communion doesn't play well for Eucharist, uh, for, for video. Watching people come forward for communion. Oh, no. not, I mean, not, we haven't been doing the, watching the, them come forward, but when they're, you know, uh, uh, doing the service. Right. I'm sorry. When they're consecrating? Yes. It's six feet in front of them. Walk right up. Be right in front. Go up inside the altar rail and get right up there where you can get a good close up. So that people can actually see the bread and the wine and the chalice. They can see it for it. So they can see the crumbs fall off the bread when they snap it. Okay. Get as close as you can get and get it. And if, and you're going to say, and just make an announcement before the service. You know, we really apologize that we can't be closer. But we have a lot more people who can't be with us today. And I'm their eyes and ears. And so I, I respectfully apologize if I get in your way. But Tree, please try and keep in mind, I'm trying to do this as an act of love for those who can't be with us today. And if you set that up with them beforehand, you have a shot. Okay. Yeah, Bob. I use a video camera, which has zoom on it. So I don't need to move it around. I can zoom right in and zoom back out. Right, but you, you, you're That's taking a feed off of the board then, right? Yes. Yes, yes. You're, yeah, you can do that if you got a zoom. Um, the, if, if, you're, if you're bare bones, uh, this is the way, don't be afraid to go out there and use that. Um, um, if you have a Zoom capability, you can do that too. Okay, Father Rob, we have another question from Barry Dixon. Can you pre-record a service, then broadcast it on Facebook? Vimeo might work, but does this require a special login for church members? Let me show you what I found. I'm going to show you right now. I've got it up on my screen here because um, I have a really good solution for that. Um, all right, so so here's our Facebook page. Um, can you see that? Oh, wait, no, did I, did I share? Oh, I didn't hit the right. Oops, almost. Oops. There, now you should be able to see. Uh, you can see my Facebook page, right? Um, and if you go into the post here, and you're going to enter a post, um, it says down here, Publishing Tools. So if I click on Publishing Tools, this allows, this takes me to a page where I can upload a video, and it'll load here in a second. I got a little windows open, so it's a little slow. Okay, so I can create a post. You click on the button over here to create a post, and you go, you put the post in which you want it to be. That's a photo video. Um, and you upload your video, whatever it happens to be. And then you pick something. Uh, I don't have anything here. I'll, I'll have to cancel out of this. But once you, once you select it, uh, and you say, um, I want to share it now, you have an option to premiere your videos. Um, and if you premiere a video, uh, you can set the time and date that it's going to run, and they will promote it and let you know that it's coming up at a certain time. So our, norm, our principal service was always at 10 o'clock on uh, Sunday mornings. And so I do a weekly premiere on Facebook on Sunday mornings, uh, that we will premiere our 10 o'clock service then. Um, and I run promos on Facebook um, with the, the same image, the branding that I put on the front of the videos, so you can do that. But you can do, that's the best way to do it. One of the problems we've had with Facebook Live is that sometimes you get kicked off because they have a habit of changing permissions with equipment um, on Saturdays. And you're all set, ready to go. And I, I, I lost like three services that way. And I just said, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, so the best way to protect yourself from that is for them to have it uploaded and already up there. The other thing I'm doing is as soon as that thing finishes its premiere, I boost that video, do a post boost, 
to a, um, about 2,500 uh, people, a three-day boost uh, within a two and a half, uh, I think it's a 15-mile radius of our church, uh, men and women between the ages of 18 and 65. Um, I set those demographics, and we're typically getting about 2,000 more views on our videos each week with that. It's very inexpensive to pay 12 bucks a week to do it. It's not much. And of those people that get the first impression, um, I'm typically about two or 300 will watch it all the way through. And of those two or 300, more and more are coming back, liking us, friending us, coming back week after week. Our Facebook uh, community now is about a third of people that I've never met that are watching the videos online. Does that answer your question or give you more? We do have a question from Russell from okay. All Saints. Sure. So, uh, uh, just a couple of things. So I just wanted your opinion about ring lights. Um, we've been doing morning prayer from like our office or from my, for my living room. So I right. wanted to know about ring lights and then also AirPod Pros using that as a mic. Um, and then the other question, and I have another question about the iPhone 11 cameras. Um, I'm a big fan of the iPhone 11. I have one. Here's mine right here. Yes. I, I, and the thing about it is the three cameras. Right. Um, uh, and if you're, if you're working with a phone, uh, th there's, I would really recommend that you shoot with a, a new app that I found called Filmic. Uh, let me tell you about it. Filmic. Um, um, Steven Soderbergh is a big time Hollywood movie maker. He's written and produced uh, and directed dozens of blockbuster films. Uh, Men in Black, and a, a lot of stuff that you've seen. A few years ago, he did a psychological thriller called Unsane with an iPhone 7 Plus. And then he made another movie for Netflix called High Flying Bird with an iPhone 8 Plus. And I started wondering how in the world did he get such a cinema quality with a phone? And he uses an app called Filmic, C, Filmic Pro. It's a 1499 app that turns any iPhone, or now they'll work on Androids as well, into a professional cinema camera. So if you're shooting with a phone, this app will significantly improve your picture quality and there's some great training videos uh, available for it too. Let me show you just a little bit on this so you can see what that is. Um, this um, information on that. Uh, there. Okay. So this is the application for it. Uh, it's called Filmic. It's available both on um, Android and Google. Uh, it has an imaging panel. You can actually set your white balance on your phone like on a professional camera. You can actually do log math like you would on a, on a professional movie camera. Um, there's all kinds of analytics where you can adjust um, the, the focus and the aperture on the camera. You can actually throw the focus back. You can walk into focus. You have all the kinds of tools that cinematographers use. Um, and it has customizable settings. You can shoot 4K high definition video on your phones, um, or you can shoot 1080 or 720 or 320. This little gadget here has made a massive difference. Um, the picture quality that we, that we went to from having a professional camera and going to phones is phenomenal. Uh, and so if you're using phones, I really highly recommend this little app. It's a, it's a lifesaver and can really do a lot for your quality. I've right. not used ring lights before. Um, but, you know, they're good for close-ups, but you have to be careful what happens in the background. Um, uh, one of the things that you want to be very careful of is that the background has some texture and some interest to it. Um, uh, typically speaking, uh, my camera's too high right now. I can see it. Russell's is too low. Uh, you want to have your cameras at high level, so there's some things you need to do to take care of that. Uh, and and one, area, one way to do is just get a, a tripod. I picked up a couple of tripods for 100 bucks a piece that use... Uh, with, with phone mounts on them. And it seems to work really well. With the, um, with those filters, I saw it on Filmic, you could put the, um, attach like a, a lens to your, right. would those work with, um, if we, when we're doing Facebook Live? Yeah, time? if they're an external lens, yeah, they can. Uh, I, Filmic doesn't connect to, it's not a streaming camera and they don't recognize Facebook. The resolution is too high. Facebook can't deal with it. Okay. So if you're going to go Facebook Live, stick with your with your Apple or Android phones and just go with that. Because okay. uh, trying to go the other way, you're just going to get you're, you're going to get lost. Uh, the Filmic is great if you're going to record stuff. 
uh, and like if you're doing morning prayer and that sort of thing, um, uh, and it, or if you're going to use a stabilizer with it, and it works really well with that. Okay, thank you. Questions, more? All right, well then I, I got one more question. Then we do our morning prayer live and mm -hmm. I use my phone. Good. Um, but is there a way that I can actually, I'm using the, um, the screen facing me. So that's the, you know, the camera there. I'm not use, able to use the uh, three cameras, or I mean my three lens, the good lenses or the better lenses. Yeah. Is there a way that I can uh, somehow see see what you're doing? <laughs> what I'm doing, right? <laughs> well, there's a couple ways you can do that. One way would be to just put the live stream up, like on an iPad, and put that near you so you can see what you're broadcasting. Okay. It's going to be about a, a five second delay, uh, but it'll give you more than you have now. Yeah. Uh, there, there are some applications. Uh, uh, Filmic has one um, which is called Filmic Remote that allows you to connect another phone to your phone. So if you have two phones, you can use one as your principal camera and the other one is an operating platform to change uh, the settings on your camera without touching your camera. Okay. It's handy if you have to stick it up in the roof or the rafters or something like that, or you're afraid you're gonna shake it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, I'll keep moving on. I have more stuff here. Um, I want to talk about multiple camera options. Um, multiple cameras, that's the, that's the gold standard for, um, uh, for what we do. Um, where am I here? There. Okay, so there's a couple of multiple cameras. This is a new application that I've just learned about that's really very, very cool, particularly if you do not have a lot of people and you don't have staff and you want to do a multi-camera shoot, particularly for a live service. It's called Switcher Studio um, and it'll connect up to nine iPhones. Unfortunately, you have to have iPhones for it to work because it's all based on applications on an iPad. It won't run on a computer, um, but it will run on an iPad and iPhones. Um, I asked a couple of my you know, folks if they would like to help and they had a couple of old iPhone 7s and they donated to the church. Or another guy who donated an iPad. So you can get those tools pretty easily. It's not very expensive. It's $40 a month. But if you're a church and you apply for nonprofit status, you get it for $29 a month for three months. So it's not very expensive. And it allows you to stream, um, uh, stream live uh, to Facebook or others directly from this application. So some of the things that Russell was talking about, this would be a way to get around it. So you could put switcher, you could, if you had a switcher studio, you could put it on an iPad, put your thing on there, put your camera, set it up how you want it, and you could do that. You could even switch back and forth between graphics. Like if you wanted to put text up on the screen of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, you could put that up there and cut back and forth between sources. This is probably the most reasonable way to get into a multi-camera setup um, in a church that I've ever seen. And they are really uh, aiming at the church market. They've got all kinds of materials that are available uh, specifically for churches. Um, when you go to their website, you can see all kinds of great stuff like that. Uh, Sling Studio is another one, but Sling Studio is $1,000 for the hardware, and then you gotta buy cameras. So it's, it's, it's a lot more costly. Um, if you're in a larger church like All Saints or uh, Grace and Ocala, you can afford that sort of stuff, and I would definitely consider looking at Sling Studio, and, and you have to have operators, that's the other thing too. If you have the people and the staff to be able to do it, that's something else. Um, when I was at, uh, when I was at First Baptist Church of Orlando, we had uh, five cameras and a crane camera. Um, we had cameramen on every single thing. We had three audio people. We had um, uh, five people in the control room to switch those things. So it's a massive crew that it takes to do what we did. That's the same crew we had when we had the um, uh, the presiding bishop here, because I, I directed that. I was in the back room and switching on that. Uh, and also when the bishop was here for his uh, consecration, I was in the back and switched that for him too. So those are massive crews. We don't have that. So figuring out ways that you can kind of create that same look and feel without having to break the bank is, um, is what I'm trying to uh, sort out for you guys. Any questions on any of that idea?
free of the first two cameras with a subscription up to 12 cameras in circuit. Don, what is that? <laughs> It's called, you have a uh, yeah, it's called Minicam and Minicam actually allows you to hook up, um, hook up up to, I, I guess you could, with subscription, you could get 12 cameras, uh, or even 24 cameras. Actually, you could keep on adding cameras on, but with the free version, you get two cameras and, uh, you could, you could stream that and, and it will recognize Minicam, your uh, Facebook and YouTube will recognize Minicam as as a um, web web webcam, uh -huh. so um, you would just select web uh, mini cam instead of your webcam, and and uh, you got you got things attached. It's just USB. Oh, that's great! I'm going to look at that. That sounds really cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, one of the questions is about social media, yeah. and if we're going to talk about that at all, um, I'm going to I'm going to touch on it a little bit. Um, let's see here. Uh, and, and how we, you know, other, other um, web-based technologies that we're using to uh, connect with our folks. So let me switch over here to this other screen for a second. Okay, um, so um, our primary way to communicate with our people is through our website. Um, this is our, this is our, 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 our homepage. Um, but when you first come to our, our site, um, yeah, get here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get here. Okay, well, when you come to our, our website, the, our landing page, no, I don't want that. Come on, get me over there. Okay, when you come, this is our landing page. So we have a page. No, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'll do that. That'll help, won't it? Good, then you didn't get to see any of my mistakes. <laughs> I hid them from you. There we go. Okay, so there you see it. So this is our landing page that you land on when you come to our page to begin with. Um, and the first thing at the top is Sunday service because everything is being driven towards Sunday worship. I want people to be in church on Sunday, so this is where they land. I've got a few cues in here, how to watch it in full screen, uh, how to get a copy of Sunday's bulletin. You click on that. It automatically opens a PDF of the entire full service bulletin for Sunday. If you want to read my sermon, because I don't uh, uh, super that, uh, you can get a copy of that. Some of our people can't hear, so all of those are available. Um, if you and that's so that's what we do. If you if you go to the website, uh, come on now, come on, go there we go. This goes to the website. So this is our homepage, which has a little gallery that offers us different things that are going on. Uh, church at home, um, and uh, this is a preview of this Sunday's cover of this next bulletin and then phone casting. Church at home is one of my favorite things because it's done an awful lot to kind of connect us to people. Um, what it does is it is a, uh, a daily conference call over the phone using a service called free conference call. It costs eight bucks a month for as many people as you want and use it as often as you want. And you can have a dedicated number for that price. And so we do morning prayer by phone uh, rather than on video. Uh, and we our numbers are growing. We started with a few or 15, 20, and we continue to promote it and people are coming back. Um, last week I was with a woman who, um, uh, just lost her husband. She has macular degeneration. She can't do anything. I said, well, you can dial a phone. She says, I can dial a phone. So she started calling in this week and she was on the phone with us for morning prayer for four days. She had surgery on Thursday. She told us about that at the end of the service. We all prayed for her. You know, it's, it's, it's community, it's church community at its best, and it's very simple, it's very low tech. So that's one of the best ways I've found to access it. Um, our face, Facebook is always a great way to get stuff in. Uh, you can upload. Uh, another thing you can do on Facebook is you can do um, little stand-up videos to, to talk to people about what you're doing. If you take a single camera and you just um, do, um, a 30 second uh, off the cuff um, announcement of Sunday's coming up and you know we're going to talk about five parables this week and you know normally the gospel's got one this week got five so we're talking about mustard seeds uh, we're talking about leaven and the bread we're talking about a uh, pearl of great price we're talking about treasure found in the field we're talking about nest full of fishing and if you think you know when the disciples said this they said do you understand it and they said yes and I read that and I go not really but I need to know more. So if you want to know more, 
tune in at 10 o'clock on Zoom. So those are the kind of short little announcements can do an awful lot to drive you. If they're really short and they're close, you get more views. Um, and, and believe it or not, if the cameras are shaky and you shoot portrait, you have a better shot at getting people to watch it. One of the things that surprised me is that the great number of people who use their phones to watch all these videos. So if they're watching their services, they're probably watching it on their phones unless they're your regulars, in which case they're, you know, they're blasting it to their 75 inch flat screen TVs in their living room. But if they're not, they're watching it on the phone. And so that's kind of really key. Uh, and based upon that research, one of the things that we're gonna do at our next recording is I'm gonna do a short uh, 30 second stand up before the service starts rather than just starting with the service because I think it's important that you get some way to connect them and invite them into doing it. When we used to do, uh, when I used to work on promo, promotion for the news, uh, news stations of Channel 6 and Channel 9, my job was to write these little pieces where the anchors would come on and they would say, you know, watch now because this is coming up next or this is coming up next. Not telling the story, but telling them that we are going to tell them the story and stay with us for that. So it is important for us to try and drive that kind of thing, especially at the beginning. So if you're doing a service and you're streaming your service live, encourage the director to go up and do a preview of what's going to happen in the service for the live stream, because it will make a difference. Now, if you can get him to record that beforehand and put it on the day before, then you're going to get more traffic. And if you get more traffic, then you get more engagement. So that's one of the best ways I know to kind of boost up social media uh, that's not too uh, tricky. You can cross platform stuff and connect it with uh, Instagram and, uh, and whatever, you know, uh, current Facebook things are. Uh, Wendy's got a contact with this woman who was on our, I don't know if she's still on with us, uh, the social media um, uh, representative, but um, there's yes, a lot. Of, hmm? Yes, she is. Oh, she's still there. Are you there? Karen. Karen, are you there? Hi, yep, I'm still here. Hey, Karen, can you, can you speak to that question about, um, uh, what's the best way to make your social media connections to get people to, to lock into a variety of ways to connect them to our services and to each other? Well, I think you did a great job answering it and it, and it really depends on where all of the people are. Um, probably your demographic is probably on Facebook. And so I think your recommendation of the Facebook premiere and letting Facebook do the notifications, that's where we've seen, um, most impact from the diocese. We also put things on YouTube and Instagram and all of that, but Facebook by and large is where we're getting the most response. So it's probably the same for you guys. Yeah. Okay, thanks, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's probably the best place for us to be, for you to be is, is Facebook right now. Um, uh, I mean, the, the reach is extraordinary. Uh, and the fact that it's, you know, uh, only 90% of the Facebook users are in the United States and Canada. I mean, 90% of them are global. <laughs> so, you know, if you've got stuff in the right language, you could probably be broadcasting in Swahili and Nairobi if you wanted. So whatever, whatever you think you might do, but you know, you just never know. Um, I'm always surprised that the, the, the global is, I mean, uh, I was listening to morning prayer uh, and doing it the other day and I, I was singing along with some music and I missed a phone call and looked at it. It was a, it was a bishop who had come to our church uh, in, uh, from, um, from Nigeria and he just wanted to call and say hi and know that we were praying for him. And it was just out of the blue. So, you know, these, we are connected globally and when we can do those things, you have an opportunity to make global connections with social media that we don't have locally. Um, you have a connection, possibility to make connections. You all have people in your churches that used to come to your church but aren't there anymore because they had to move away. And they say, you know, I don't, I haven't found a church where we are or anything like that. You have an opportunity to say, well, you, you're, we still count you. You know, you're still one of us. So if you want to come, you know, all you got to do is just show up and, and, and we'll be happy to have you there, so. Okay. Uh, Rob. Yes, sir. Might there be a best practices page after this time together where things could be contributed? or offered or suggested? Oh, sure, sure, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Uh, Wendy can probably orchestrate that most easily. And you know, if you've got, if you have stuff that you want people to know about and, and share it with you, others, I mean, I've learned a lot just getting ready to again today. I learned, um, I learned about sling, I didn't know about sling. Uh, I did not know about Minicamp. 
those are both two really great opportunities to do some stuff that I can't wait to start digging into. Um, the main thing we have to do right now is get better. I mean, uh, no matter where you are in the stream of this industry or what's going on, whatever you do this week needs to be better next week. And whatever you do next week has to get better and better and better and better. So that means we really have to take a critical eye at what we're doing and start noticing things. You know, um, you know, if you're shooting and the door to the, 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 um, to the sacristy is open, make sure that somebody knows to close the doors. You know, if, you know, <laughs> you know, if there's a, you know, somebody's sweater hanging on the back of, a, of a, the pew and it's in the middle of the shop, you know, somebody needs to watch this. Though. It's those little details because what happens is those tiny little things are distractions and it breaks the flow. When we come to church, we absolutely kill our sons. We're, we're like maniacs to make sure that our services are as clean and as smooth and as flawless as possible so that there is no possibility that we're going to interrupt the movement of God with the parishioners during worship. We want that to be clean. It's not that we're trying to be perfect. We just don't want to get in God's way. And we need to look at our, our television or our broadcast or our webcasting that same way. Because if we just slap something up, they're not coming back. Because there's lots of other stuff that they can watch that's going to be better. Um, and, I, and, and not necessarily the ones you think it was going to be better. I, I must tell you, I watched the, the service from the National Cathedral. I was really disappointed. I thought it was slow, placed, and boring, and I thought the shots were too wide, and we couldn't see anything. And, you know, you know, they had four people. You know, I guess they wanted to show that they have a really big building. Um, and I could see that. But you could do that in four seconds. And after that, how could I see their faces? But they wouldn't do that. So some of these things are just a matter of camera placement, uh, making sure that you're lit. Um, lighting's another thing. Um, if you have bad lighting in your church, um, I bought a three light uh, video light kit for a couple hundred bucks with LEDs um, that have knobs on the back that you can actually adjust the color temperature of the light to match the light in the room. Um, and it was, I put three of them up. I put two on the choir, looks great. I put one on the side of the organ. I shoot the music that one. Then we set up, we do the liturgy. I move two of them up front, put another one in the back. And we just, just move them around. They don't draw any power, so you don't need to worry about, do I have to bring in a generator or anything like that? They don't, you know, they're, they're very low wattage, so they're really practical and they don't take up a lot of room. Um, I want to tell you about one other thing that I found um, that, uh, that I learned. I realized, I'm, I'm a manuscript preacher, so when I preach, I am looking down at my manuscript and looking up and back. I'm sitting in the pulpit, I'm doing that. And I looked at it, and I realized I'm not connecting with the people very well. Um, and I'm not the kind of, I just don't do well, because uh, I got ums and ahs, you hear me talk now. And so you can imagine, if I was preaching, it would be terrible. So I don't want it to be terrible. I want it to be good and focused. So I found a teleprompter. Now, I would not use a teleprompter in a normal service, but this is, this is not normal. And so I, I found a teleprompter that you use with a, an iPad that sits on the bottom and it reflects into a piece of glass. Um, and then you put your phone in the back of it. And then the software follows the text of your sermon by your voice. Uh, and so all I'm doing is reading my sermon on a piece of glass with a camera behind it the whole time. And the result is I'm word for word on the text that I want to maintain the integrity. And at the same time, I never lose eye contact with the viewer. It's, uh, it's, I'm, just, I'm just blown away by how cool it looks. Um, I can actually show you what one looks like here because I have, um, uh, let's see here. And, uh, Okay, let me do this. I'm gonna do a screen share here real quick. Um, okay, so this is the editing. Comp this is the editor I use. I use uh, Adobe Rush, um, but this is the. Um, uh, you can see there's, that's me, um, and that's me. Now, normally I would do it from the pulpit, but because the back the, behind the pulpit is a wooden wall that's stained and got cracks in it, I step out in front of the pulpit and do it from there. So in that position, I'm standing there, I'm looking directly at you, I make perfect eye contact and, I, and it, it rolls beautifully. So um, 
we've done that. Uh, we just added that a couple of weeks ago. So every week I try and find things that I can do that will make it better and better and better. Um, and there's all kinds of things you can do. For example, our choir, um, I'll take it over so do this here. Um, oh, it's, being, it's being funny, not, not humorous funny. Get into this for a second. Okay. Bear with me one second. I'll give you one. I'll show you one more thing. Yeah. Uh, um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them while I'm calling this up. What's the name of that teleprompter app, Father? Uh, oh, it's over here. It's called um, it's called Glide Gear. <laughs> Glide Gear is available on Amazon for a hundred bucks for the small one. There's a larger one for two hundred bucks. Get the bigger one. I got the smaller one, and it's a little bit small. It's a little bit tricky because uh, the glass isn't as big. The bigger the glass, the easier it is to read. Um, and then you need a tripod to put it on top of of some kind. Uh, and um, well, I'll show you. That. I'll show you what I got here. Well, let me get this here. Okay, here I'm going to take this over here. Okay. We have people on Facebook, Father Rob, asking too about the name of the phone casting. Oh, service. the phone casting company? Okay. Yeah. I'll pop that or up. The it's app. Mm -hmm. And it's in the it's in the notes. It's called uh, it's called free conference call. Freeconferencecall.com. Um, let me share that screen. screen. Okay, this is a free conference call. Uh, you can create a free account, you can have it for free. Um, but um, I, I like it a lot for um, uh, the, 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 uh, the additional money. It's really worth it. Um, and it costs like eight bucks a month. Uh, we use it for uh, all kinds of things. Um, we have living in the present small groups. They gather by phone and they meet every week on it and they just, you know, talk it up and make sure that what they want to do. Um, we're also using Zoom for Daughters of the King. We're using Daughters of the King, uh, Zoom for vestry meetings and we're using Zoom for Bible study classes, uh, which is really great too. So it's another opportunity to use that technology. Um, uh, I'm also using a program called Easy Texting. Let me show you that one real quick here. I'm jumping around a little bit. I apologize. I'm not quite as uh, loony as I might seem. Uh, Easy Texting allows you to send group text messages to cell phones and landlines now. Uh, and I'm not sure how that works, but I, I understand I can do that um, to different people. Uh, and you can also send pre recorded voice messages on it. Uh, it costs me about 40 bucks a month for the, the units, a little more money for this, but it's really valuable. So I say, I want to send a, um, a text message to the whole church. So I just pick St. Gabriel's. I pick the thing. I say, St. Gabriel's news is a topic. Uh, are you missing church? Do you want to, why not join our morning prayer phone cast? All you need is a phone, cell or landline. Just call this number and you do that. And then it, it does a, a graphic in that goes up on your phone. So it's not just boring. And then there's a, a single button that they can click. They hit that button and it takes them directly to all the information they need. It'll take them to the web page. It'll take them to anywhere or, or launch a Zoom account. You can do anything. But the idea of having it in your phone and just be able to send blast out to everybody is really easy. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll send the expanded version of whatever I'm telling them in an email using MailChimp. So we got MailChimp going to them. We've got um, these, the easy text going to them as well, plus whatever we're doing on Facebook. But this is really the more the inside baseball thing that, that we do for ourselves. The other thing that we did that's been really helpful for making connections has been to do a phone tree. Uh, when we first, uh, we first went out, I sent a text message to everybody saying, I need your help. Are any of you willing to send, uh, make some phone calls on behalf of the church? And we had a whole bunch of people that said, yep, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and I got 20 of them. 
and I, we have a directory, a new church directory. So we took the church directory and we turned it into a PDF file and we put it up on the website. So it's behind a password. So they, there's a button on our website that says, oh, I want to go to, um, uh, where are we? Do, do, do. Here for you. Yeah, I'll show you this one so you can see it. Okay, so there, it's here. So um, it's right on here. So that you want your parish directory, it's right here. You click here for the parish directory, and then you click here for a password. The password sends me an email that says, I need the password, and I sit and I call, and give me your phone number, and I call them back and give them the password. Um, so that way they have access to the whole parish directory. Um, password's there, and it's here. And it's, it's just like the print one, only, um, only it's a PDF. Um, and so there it is. Oh, there it is. Father Rob, if people wanted to see an example of what you send out on easy texting, how would they sign up for that? Uh, just tell me you want to sub, you want to um, send me a text or an email to say, you know, put me on your easy text list and you'll get them. I'll just go to you. And if you and that work. would give people an example if you guys yeah. want to see what St. Gary Burroughs is doing. Yeah, it's really helpful because everybody's texting. Texting is the best way to communicate with people these days. Uh, not so much for our older folks. So older folks, what you can do is you can record a, a voicemail message. So if you've got older people, particularly if you have someone who's a beloved member of the congregation and they happen to die and there's no, and they, you can't have a funeral because of this COVID, it's really good to hear the rector's voice to say, I'm, I'm, I call with some sad news. Uh, you know, Wanda Sue passed away this week. She was a member of the vestry and a singer in the choir, and we all knew her and loved her, and we miss her dearly. And it's especially hard on us that we can't get together to honor her the way she deserves. And so I want to let you know that this is the case uh, and that uh, to ask for your prayers for her and for her family. And do a little um, commendation prayer at the end of that, and at least you're doing something uh, in those cases because it's really hard to do. It's really hard when we can't do when we're doing nothing. <laughs> Okay, you were asking about, um, I was, oh, I was going to show, I know what I'm going to show you. Um, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, I was going to show you this. Um, share screen. All right, so, um, this is, um, this is last Sunday's service. Uh, it starts with a graphic, and all of our stuff is branded. Good morning. It's so good to have you with us today. Our opening hymn is number 423. Okay, I'm not going to make you listen to it all the way through. But the idea is, is that four people can sound pretty good if you mic them right and you have enough ambience in there. And they're not in the choir loft. They're in front of the altar because that's a prettier background. That's a, that's a, a lovelier place to look. Um, the, when you go down here to the, uh, the, the liturgy, the liturgy is done from a low angle. You can see the, the, the beauty of the church. But when I start speaking, we go tighter. The graphics all have a background that's themed. This was from uh, last week, uh, let the weeds grow with the wheat. So I've got weeds with flowers on them behind all the graphics this week. Um, and you can change that stuff up each week so it looks, uh, it looks fresh. Um, uh, where's the reading? Uh, where's Vaughn? Uh, Come on, Vaughn, where are you? Yeah. So here's our reader. This is our verger. He does all the readings. So we move the ambo out from the lectern out from where it was. So there's a better background. We move flowers in. We put these in the right position. We move things around so that the whole shot looks pretty and lush. And then we put some extra warm light on so that it looks good. So that's the kind of thing that we that I, you know, every week we try and find some way to make it better. Um, so, and if you want to see any of our stuff, they're all on Vimeo. Um, um, because Vimeo, I'll show you the Vimeo page. Vimeo does, um, share screen. And if you can give people an idea of what post production takes, um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the reality of the number of hours it takes 
the to reality, you know, I, you know, I work more hours now than I did when we were work, when I was working as a priest. There's more hours involved in it. Um, uh, this is this is the Vimeo page. So if you go to our Vimeo page, these are all the videos that we had for the last, you know, uh, since we started doing this. So this is the service from four months ago. Um, and you, you, you know, if you one of the things that's nice about Vimeo is if you click on um, one of your services, like uh, let's say for example, I'll just pick this one. If I click on this, I can look at analytics, and it'll show you um, how many people watched and what they watched. So you can see I had 179 view, 373 uh, uh, impressions of people who saw that. So um, 170, 373 people looked in the door on Vimeo. Now this is just the website stuff, so this doesn't include Facebook. So there's a separate set of numbers that you can tally on that. So you start adding those up and all of a sudden your little church of 85 is now 500. And that's happening not just with me, but it's happening across the country in churches that are actively engaging in broadcasting social media and bringing stuff up uh, on that. Um, okay, um, I'll, let me switch this here. Stop this here. I'm going to show you one more. I hope I'm not making it too. <laughs> Y'all still with me here? You're nodding, I guess. I hope you are. <laughs> um, the... Um, this is, the, this is how I shoot and edit. We shoot two Sunday morning prayer services every other Friday. So we shoot two services in one day, so I'm ahead. At 8.30, four voice, uh, the four voice choir uh, practices hymns for an hour, and then we record the music for both weeks. An iPad records the organist, two iPhones, and Amigo record the choir. Then the cameras move to the altar and the liturgy is recorded. The choir says the amens and the responses to the liturgy, and then they leave. One camera moves to the lectern, the verger reads the scriptures, and then finally a camera fitted with a teleprompter, um, the sermon on an iPad moves up the screen in front of the glass with the preacher's voice, and we're done at two o'clock. So the shoot day is not too bad. The video is then uploaded onto my computer. I have a 2020 Mac Mini, and I begin editing. I use Adobe Rush, which is a stripped down version of Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, which is this uh, the gold standard of editing platforms used across the world these days. Um, you can get it for a nonprofit for 15 bucks a month through TechSoup. TechSoup is a facility, uh, is a website that um, helps uh, nonprofits get free stuff. Uh, you can get free stuff from uh, Microsoft, all kinds of different people. Uh, but they have, a, they have a deal with uh, Adobe that you can get any of their stuff, whether you want Premiere or Rush or Photoshop or anything else. I use Canva to do all the graphics to build the thing with. It typically takes me about two to three hours to build all the graphics for a Sunday service. However, one of the, the beauties of the liturgy is it's the same every week. And so all I have to do is change the backgrounds each week. So when they tune in, it looks like it's all brand new, but actually I'm using the same frame. I'm just changing the background so it looks fresh and new, so it doesn't look stale. Um, uh, and then I load those onto my desktops. Um, it usually takes me all day on Saturday, that first Saturday, to edit the first program. After it's finished, it has to be rendered by the computer, which takes about an hour, but you can go have dinner. <laughs> uh, and then you have to upload it to Vimeo, which takes about an hour, and you can simultaneously upload it to Facebook at the same time. Uh, and then we set up the premiere for video on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock on the Facebook page. Um, the link to the Vimeo version, it goes on the landing page of the website. Um, and I build a website too, so I turn that live as soon as it's up. So whenever, whatever time you get up on Sunday morning, you can have church. So if you want church at 7.30, you have it at 7.30. You want it at 10, you have it at 10. If you want to do the late 11.30 service, you know, I have one person says, I can only do it on Mondays. Fine, come on Monday. It's up all week long. That service stays up all for seven days until we replace it with the following Sunday service. Um, uh, Pre-COVID, our weekly attendance was 180, 190. Weekly impressions now between two and three thousand, with three to four, um, three to four hundred households watching. So there's a significant amount of work, and as I said, our Facebook followers are about a third of the people I've never met. So, thank you so much, Father Rob. We've got um, the time is six. 43 and I just wanted to be respectful of your time. Are there any questions oh, to wrap it up? Because we could keep going for 
hours I'm on this topic. I'm happy to keep going for another 15 minutes because if you guys have questions, I'm happy to help you any way I can. Um, well, Rob, minor question. Yeah. Uh, warm over cool. Like I'm right now I'm using a warm uh, circle light set on warm. You look like you're more cool. Uh, I'm looking cool because you're other? looking at daylight from windows on my face. Okay. Uh, one better than the other. Any thoughts? I like warm. I like the warm light. If you look at our, if you look at the broadcast, uh, it's all warm light. I, I run everything at 2700K. Uh, we have all, you know, we had the dark woods inside the church and the stained glass windows, and it, it just makes it look so rich and elegant. Um, where you really want to use the cool light is if you have a lot of daylight coming in through your stained glass windows and they're in the shot. Because daylight is about 7,000 degrees Kelvin, 8,000 degrees. It's really very blue. Um, so if you've got stained glass windows in the shot and you want to try and bring up to make it look the color right, uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, but I don't mind mixed light. Uh, I typically used to light a lot of times with mixed light when I have blues coming in from one side and, and then warm on the other and, and the thing. The main thing is that, that your face is at, at a consistent 2700 to 3000 degrees Kelvin. That's where you want your color temperature on, on your faces and then set your color balance on your face, your white balance on your face and let the rest of it just go wherever it goes. But that's what I recommend. Thank you. Father Rob, one quick question. Yeah. Uh, how many volunteers are involved with uh, doing your uh, um, video services? We have uh, a choir director and three singers. I have an organist. I have one tech person. I have a verger who reads and also helps move. Uh, and me. That's it. So there's Thank eight you. of us that do the whole thing. I, for a couple of reasons. One is, is we wanted to keep under 10 because of COVID. Uh, we all wear masks in the church except when we sing. We all stay far apart when we do this. We have hand sanitizer before we come in. We are meticulous. I can't afford to lose any of these people. Uh, and so I implore them, uh, be smart, be safe, because we need you. We desperately need you. Um, and one, one follow-up question. Um, uh, if you were not doing the, uh, it seems like you're doing most of the editing. Uh, uh, if you, uh, do you rely on others uh, to do any of the editing or the technical stuff? I wish I could. I just don't have anybody. I just don't have anybody in my church that is technical. I don't, I, you would think uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center, all those engineers, there's got to be somebody out there who could do it, but I have not found anybody who does it. Um, Thank you. And I'm, and I'm sorry for that. Um, if, if, if it were, if I would, in one, I'm approaching retirement, um, I turned 71 this year, so I don't have a lot of time left before they kick me to the curb. And when that happens, I want to make sure that the, the, the things continue on, which is why I'm really moving thinking in terms of, uh, for down the line to go with the, um, the switcher studio setup with uh, a handful of phones, one on the choir, one on the lectern, one on the altar, one on the pulpit, one on a wide shot on the back of the church, and one on the organ, and, and have them plugged in and framed up and ready to go so that when service time comes, all you have to do is open up the iPad with the this, this service on there and tap it and just run through it. Um, I mean, you can put, if you're, if you're already doing screen uh, in your churches, if you've got screens for words, you can feed that PowerPoint or whatever you're using you know, right straight into, the, into that app. And then you're doing multi-camera and one person could do it. Uh, it really cuts down on the tech, the text, the number of people that you can do it. It's the, it's the most practical way to do a, a large scale multi-camera effort. And, and I mean, with nine cameras, I mean, you, you can have one on the cross on the roof. You can stick one on the, on the altar. I mean, you could do a reverse shot of the congreg of the empty truth. You have a lot of options that are available to you then. And it seems to be the most flexible and the most affordable that I've seen. And we have a question from Susie Burlock. What are your plans after COVID for continuing productions? That is a big one uh, because obviously um, if I open the church for 150 people and I've, I, I've got 500 people tuning into my webcast every week, I can't just shut that down, can I? It doesn't make any sense. If we're called to um, take the gospel to the world, um, that everyone would know how much God loves them so that they could respond to that love, then we have to keep doing that. If we are truly a missionary church, then that means we do whatever we have to do. 
Um, so uh, my take is that, yes, I think we need to keep doing it. If there's a, if there's a way to simplify it so it is not so labor intensive, um, that would make it sustainable. Um, so my plan uh, for continuing after COVID would be that. Um, I, I believe that morning prayer is a better service, um, better liturgy uh, for, without Eucharist. If you have Eucharist, everybody's expecting it and it's not there. Um, and, and it's disappointing. Uh, morning prayer was the standard of worship in the United States for the first, you know, 50 years, 75 years. You know, we didn't want to have priests coming over from England because they could be spies. So we went to morning prayer and we didn't have it. We lay, it was lay lit for a long time. And if you go into these old Southern churches, you'll see these big scrolling uh, balconies going up to the, you know, the preacher, but the altar is behind it, you know, behind a fence somewhere in the back of the church. So that was the focus for a long time. So it's, it's safely within our heritage to do that. Um, and there's something really wonderful about the, the daily office. Morning prayer sustains me. I'm who I am because of the daily office. I firmly believe in it and don't miss it. I lead it every day. And I'm sure Russell will second me on that. <laughs> it really is it really is key. And if you're not doing it, do it. It's, your life will just get better instantly. <laughs> Rob, um, I, for people like me who have not done any uh, studying production, um, and don't have time or the money to do, you know, take courses or to go down to full sale. Uh, what's a good, what, I mean, it's, there's a lot here, you know, and when I look online, it's overwhelming. I'm telling you what, there's so many great YouTube videos to train you on how to do this. There's a guy out of Australia that does some really great technical stuff. Uh, he's got a huge presence. Um, uh, there's all kinds of great stuff out there and these are short three to five minute videos. So that's something that you can swallow. I mean, it's not, you know, an, an hour, you know, many hours of coursework and then they're, they're shorter, they're succinct, they're really helpful and really effective. Uh, if you're looking for something that can help you find stuff that's up your alley, you know, um, but there's, I mean, there's, there's great little tutorials on how to use Filmic, uh, how to use a Steadicam, how to use a, a, um, the DJI. I've got one here. This is it here. This is my little DJI. See? So this is my phone, and there's the camera. And, you know, I just care. And it holds it steady. You just take it around with you. So how do you run this thing? Well, there's a YouTube video. Use the YouTube video. Figure it out. That's, that's the best source of things as far as education goes. I mean, there's billions of hours on that thing. What's the uh, Australian's address? Uh, oh, let me see if I can find, you here, find it for you. Here we go. I'll share this thing with you. Okay. I'm not doing that. I'm skipping, skipping the ad. Okay, so here's um, um come on. Yeah, here we go. Justin Brown, Primal Video, that's who he is. And he's on YouTube. Um, hey YouTube, it's Justin Brown here. And thanks very much for checking out the Primal Video YouTube channel. So that's who he is, and that's what it looks like. Um, so it's YouTube channel, um, and it's Primal Video. If you Google it, you'll find all kinds of stuff. But he's got stuff about editing, editing apps for Androids, um, how to create a YouTube channel, uh, transfer videos between an iPhone and that, uh, how to retard your Android. I mean, anything that you think you may want to know, um, he's got lots of videos. He's really entertaining. He's to the point. His stuff is well done. It's well produced. Um, he's, he's one of my go-to guys when I need to learn something. Thank you. So it's, it can be really helpful for you. Rob, part of the part of being overwhelmed though for me is trying to figure out, well, what's the first thing I should learn how to do? So, I mean, I can do Facebook Live. Uh, we do, we've done Vimeo. So what's the 
what's the next step up? What's the um, the, the next it, step up? I, I, the next step up is to do what you're doing better than anybody else in the world. Okay, that's really what the next step is. I mean, it's it's not so much that the platform, but that the quality of the output of what you're doing is significantly better than everybody else. And that's just a matter of getting more refined, uh, better attention to detail, uh, better timing, better rhythm. Uh, I, uh, you know how we, I do a sermon, and then after the sermon, I put a hymn in. It's not part of the office, but I, I take a liberty to put a hymn in. And whatever the hymn is, is tied to what the sermon is. Well, the organist plays the intro on the organ. So now I have the, the organ intro come in underneath the last lines of my sermon. So as I'm winding up my preaching, the music starts creeping in, you know, I say, and you know, and you know, so you need to do this and that, and they get immortal, invisible. So they just duff together, to tail together. So you end up with a sermon hymn module that kind of moves you through the whole spirit. So you can do some things on television. I mean, I could never get them to do that in church. I mean, they'd be looking at me, what, start now, you're still talking. <laughs> so so you, it's just looking at things that you can do. And, and part of that is critically looking at what you've created and saying, um, could this be better? You know, what's wrong with this? Or if you, if you want a, another critical eye, I'm perfectly willing to do that. And I promise not to be mean. I, I won't be insulting. But if I see something, because um, I believe uh, our job is to be the best encouragers in the world. St. Gabriel said that's their mission, to be the most encouraging people in the world. That's their mission for our church. It has been for a long time. And so that's the best way that I know to get things done. So encourage your people that you're working with, tell them they're doing a great job. Um, encourage them to get better. That's, that's the main thing. Try to find, and uh, to be honest with you, God's going to reveal where you go next with this stuff. Um, the, the developments that have happened to me over the, the last uh, weeks have not happened um, without his input without him saying, hey, uh, you need to do this proper. An idea pops into my head. You know, where do those ideas come from? They don't come from me. I'm not that smart. So these ideas that come into your head actually are, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking into what you can do and what you might do and how you might do that. Do you mind repeating the name of the teleprompter that you use? Yeah, I'll put it up for you. It's on Amazon here. I've got it. I got many windows open over here. Uh, let's see, where am I here? I think, now here it is. I'll share the screen with you. More screen shares than any Zoom call today, probably. Now this is what it looks like. Um, and I think uh, these are the monopods. You know, they're real simple little stands. This is a $54 one, it's really easy to do. And they also, Amazon's also got some really good deals on, uh, on some of that other stuff. Another really good resource for gear is uh, b &H, uh, b h Photo Video. Um, they have tons and tons of stuff. Um, I got tripods from them. Let me see, I think I need them. My orders, I can even show you what I bought from them. For what it's worth. Load up, load up. Uh, yeah, so this is the Glide Gear. This is the T TMP50 um, that I bought from them. And it was um, 100 bucks. That's what it looks like. Uh, and uh, you can see you can see the phones down here on the bottom. And then the iPad sits here. This ha He's using a phone. He's using two phones on this particular app. But you can fit an iPad in underneath it. Um, and then you just have to make sure that it comes in a nice little flat little case. Um, and you can see the phone kind of slides off to the side because the camera needs to be centered on it so that you're looking down the center of the lens. Anything else you want to see? <laughs> Let me see if there's anything else I skipped. Um, I want to see everything, Father Rob. Uh, hopefully you have a page for us. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do some, I'll put some stuff together. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that can happen. And if you look, if you see, if you just need something to don't text me, call me, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do any of that stuff. Um, my life is different right now. Um, uh, my wife, um, 
has been struggling with kidney disease for a while. And uh, a month ago, she started dialysis, and we're opting for home hemodialysis, which means every day, uh, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're at the dialysis center, and I'm getting trained on how to be a caregiver and hook her up and do the connections and, and run a, a dialyzer for her every day. Um, uh, but the good news is, is her health has just bounced back enormously. She's, I have my old girl back and it's really wonderful. So that's uh, during, uh, once I get her hooked up, there's a little gap of time in the morning. Uh, so I have a chance to take emails and stuff like that. So I can, I can follow up with you on that. So, um, I'll, I'll get back to you. It may not be instantly, but I will get back to you. I promise I will do that because I'm very passionate about the Episcopal church doing a good job in television. We've been abysmal at it for a long time. When I was in TV, I always wanted to get in there and do something with it, and nobody would ever take me seriously. So now I'm a priest, now they are taking me seriously. So there you go. <laughs> I just wanted to remind everybody, we will be sending out the notes and they'll have a link in them um, to the different uh, tools that Father Rob recommended, the different websites. And if you don't mind giving people your phone number, Father Rob, you mentioned that they could text sure. your questions. Yeah, you can. My number is 321-704-2949. So you can call or text, whatever makes you happy. Thank you guys for joining us. It's been an hour and a half, so I want to respect your time father rob um again i, I love doing it it's so it's fun for me i get yeah th thank you i'll be I floating, all, floating all night long <laughs> yes and he's serious if you've got questions let him know and i'm also um i've also captured the chat questions so we will get all that to you guys in an email next week can i pray with you before we go how would that thank be? you love thank you. you the lord be with you also with you Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for those people who have decided to step out in faith into areas unknown to them. We give you thanks for the gifts of technology that you have given to us to be used for your purposes. We give you thanks for the opportunity to embrace these technologies so that we may share the gospel with the world and bring new people to Jesus, that they may come to know how much he loves them, about his love and his grace and his forgiveness, and how he is capable of sustaining us through the worst of times, even in the midst of a pandemic. Lord, the pandemic has called us to this new ministry. You've directed us to move this way so that we can reach out to others through these new channels of communication. And I ask that you would bless all those who are interested in advancing your word through these means, to be supported by you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Thank now you. go kick it, kids. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Huh. Thank you, Father Thank Rob. You. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for spending your Friday night with us. <laughs>